I'm Dr. Maria Conley, and today I'd like to talk about how injury to one part of the spine can cause abnormal motion and load transfers, thereby affecting other parts of the spine over time. Recall that the spine can be broken down into its smallest functional unit, which is a three-joint complex or two vertebra lying on top of each other. The front portion of the unit consists of two vertebral bodies, which are joined by a special kind of joint called an intervertebral disc. The back portion of the functional unit consists of two facet joints, which connect two adjacent vertebra from top to bottom. Wear and tear changes of the spine typically occur first in the vertebral end plates above and below the intervertebral disc. Over time, the jelly-like core of the disc dries out and loses its ability to bear weight. With continued load on the spine, the intervertebral disc flattens out and cannot effectively distribute this pressure across the vertebral bodies. Think of a flat tire which can no longer hold air. At this point, the forces on the spine are transferred to the synovial facet joints in the back, which eventually break down and become arthritic. So we can see that the cumulative force on the spine affects the intervertebral disc initially and then affects the posterior facet joints. The spine also becomes more unstable over time. As the vertebral column continues to be loaded under pressure, the discs flatten out and the vertebral column actually loses height. This loss of height forces the facet joints in the back closer together, which causes them to, to grind together and to become arthritic. As the spinal column collapses on itself, the space for nerve roots exiting the spine also gets smaller. This often causes pinching of the nerve roots as they exit the spine. These wear and tear changes in the spine may or may not cause symptoms. Multiple MRI studies have shown that disc breakdown and facet joint arthritis are found in nearly 90% of asymptomatic individuals aged 60 years or older. So these are people without any symptoms at all. They're feeling fine. Let's take a closer look at the disintegration of the intervertebral disc. This process typically occurs in middle age spines, you know, 30s, 40s, 50s. I would like to use an analogy. Think of, an inter, of the intervertebral disc as a sliced onion with a core of white slime stuffed inside of it. The white slime represents the gelatinous inner core, which is called the nucleus pulposus. And the onion slice represents the tough layers of the annulus, which are tightly wrapped around the nucleus in a circular pattern. This way, the healthy intervertebral disc handles most of the load on the spine. However, with continued load on the spine, the vertebral body end plate turns out to be the weak link and is the first structure to crack under pressure. 
In contrast to the vertebral bone, the end plate is made of a softer cartilage material and thus is more susceptible to damage. Recall that the end plate is the portion of the vertebral body immediately adjacent to the intervertebral disc. Cracks in the end plate cause decompression of that jelly-like nucleus propulsus in the center of the disc. Now this leads to a chain reaction of destruction in the intervertebral disc. Since the jelly-like nucleus has decompressed, it can no longer bear weight effectively. So loads are transferred from the center of the disc to the outer fibers of the annulus, so to the outer portion of the, of the disc. When the force of the load gets too high, the collagen fibers of the annulus begin to tear. Radial tears are the most destructive and they start at the center of the disc. Now this allows the nucleus propulsus, the jelly-like material, to leak out of the center of the disc through those long radial tears and then eventually can leak out of the disc or cause disc herniation or prolapse. Sometimes under prolonged pressure, the jelly-like substance of the nucleus may be pushed out past the outer border of the annulus. And this is what leads to prolapse of the nucleus propulsus. As the annulus fibers tear, the nucleus propulsus leaks out through these tears and the entire disc just flattens out. Flattening of the disc brings the vertebral bodies closer together. This decrease in overall disc height also forces the facet joints in the back closer to one another. And this leads to facet joint arthritis, or osteoarthritis. The somewhat confusing medical term for this is spondylosis. In osteoarthritis, abnormal bony structures called osteophytes start to appear on the surfaces of the vertebral body and near the openings in the spine where the nerve roots exit. And these openings are called the intervertebral foramen. These osteophytes, it's a kind of interesting word, it actually means bony plant. Um, these osteophytes can then compress the exiting nerve roots and decrease the diameter of the spinal canal which can sometimes cause pinching of the spinal cord or compression of that spinal cord. Sometimes this condition called spinal stenosis can be painful. This is a common cause of low back pain radiating down the legs. Other structures that can pinch the nerves inside that spinal canal include a herniated disc material, which usually herniates out to the back of the vertebral body, and also an enlarged ligamentum flavum. So the ligamentum flavum is the toughest ligament in the spine, and it forms the, the floor of the spinal canal. With age, it tends to bulge forward into the spinal canal. It has less elastic recoil as its stretchy elastin composition is slowly replaced by stiffer collagen fibers as, as we age. So what's the big picture? Over time, the complex structure of the spine buckles and compresses under continued force. The intervertebral discs tear and flatten out. This process transfers more load to the facet joints in the back, which can then become arthritic and cause pinching of the nerves and sometimes even compression of the central spinal canal. All these changes often begin to occur by age 30, so pretty early in life, and eventually are seen in virtually all spines after the age of 60. These wear and tear changes in the spine can cause pain, but they often do not. 
I hope that this was helpful for you. Thank you for listening.